Hi guys, welcome back to Nifty Inc. I'm Candice and today I want to share something with you that I've struggled with a little bit in the past, but now that I've gotten a little bit more practice in, I feel like I can give some tips about how to make it easier, and that is drawing in public or out and about on the go. It can be a big fear to overcome when there's people around you and you don't really know what you're doing, but here are six tips for you to really help you feel more comfortable in public when you draw. Okay guys, so let's start with the first tip. And my first tip for you guys is think before you start. I have this tip for pretty much every area of my life and sometimes it makes me overthink a little bit, but I really think it's worth it in this situation to think things through before you just head out. You wanna put a little bit of thought into it just so that you can feel more prepared when you get a little bit more uncomfortable out in public. So one of the things that goes along with thinking before you start is, I'm opening up my bag here, that's a little noise, packing your supplies. So for my trip, I decided to pack a sketchbook, um, a pencil case, I also have a really cheap set of watercolors and tiny little watercolor pad that's super cheap. And I have these watercolor brushes, these water brushes, which I didn't put in my case just so they didn't leak, but they were in my bag. So let's go over what I packed and why. So when you start out and you're thinking about going and doing stuff in the public, you don't want to bring too much stuff with you. As you can see here, I have a pretty small amount. It could fit into even a, a big purse, and that's what I did. I put all of my stuff into a bag and just brought it with me when I was doing things. I ended up not doing any watercolor work while I was out, but it was really nice to have just in case, especially if you're on vacation and you head back to your hotel room at the end of the day. If you decide to add color to your pictures, you have this right here with you, and that's great. So put those aside since I didn't really use them. But what I have here is a really cheap and thin $1 sketchbook that I bring with me when I travel. You can bring any type of small sketchbook. You can even bring a large sketchbook if you wanted to. But it's nice, I like that this one is cheap so that if it gets ruined or bent a little bit, I don't worry about it. So here's that. I really like the pretty uh, cover too. I got it for I think a dollar at Michael's. And then here's my pencil case. And the thing that I wanna talk about when you're packing a pencil case is you wanna really limit yourself to your supplies. As you can see, I have a ton of supplies that I could have brought with me from home, but I decided to keep it pretty limited. One of the things you wanna limit is your color palette. You don't wanna bring a huge rainbow of colors if you're not gonna use them all in the, in the end. You wanna kinda of keep things small and compact. So I knew I was going to Yosemite, a national park, so I decided to keep things in pretty neutral tones, nature tones, subdued tones, so that when I was coloring, I wouldn't have to go through, for example, bright highlighter colors. I wasn't gonna be drawing anything super bright, I was gonna be drawing nature items. So that's what I decided to choose. Like I said, we headed to Yosemite National Park to do some hikes, really enjoy nature, and kind of relax. And that brings me to tip number four three, which is grow your collection. And what I mean by that is grow your reference collection. Take home what you find, take pictures of what you see. You can even um, pick up pine cones and leaves and take those home with you. And that can be really helpful because when you go back and you look through your sketchbook later, you'll have those references of what you used when you drew. And you can also use those references later when you feel inspired to do maybe a little bit more involved artwork. A lot of times when you're out and about, you're just doing simple sketches. But if you really like what you do and later you want to create a really detailed painting, you'll have those up close references that you took on your trip to help you complete that finished art piece. So tip number three is grow your collection. So I wanted to show you one of the pieces that I did while I was on vacation in Yosemite. I ended up doing this in the hotel room. We had gone um, up to Glacier Point to see the sunrise. It was really beautiful, but I was kind of tired. Didn't want to do some hiking, so we went back to the hotel room to rest a little bit before we did the rest of our day. And when we got back to the hotel room, I ended up not being able to fall back asleep. My husband David did. So while he slept for about an hour, I did this little sketch of a Stellar's Jay. We went up to Glacier Point on the way back down. We saw this little guy hopping from branch to branch and he was really cute, really beautiful colors. And so I just tried to sit down and sketch him kind of from memory, which um, turned out to work out really great. I looked at some reference later and I don't think I missed anything, which is pretty unusual. <laughs> Usually when you don't sketch from reference, you end up missing things or the anatomy is wrong, but I just drew this from memory real, real quick. And then later today, when we go out in public and try and draw some more, oh, here's a little fish. Um, 
you'll see that I'm going to draw another bird that I saw in Yosemite, this time from a reference. I took some video footage of a blue grouse that we saw also on Glacier Point, and so I'll be using that as I draw out and about today in a cafe. So let's head out. So here we are, we're on our way, we're trying to find where we're gonna set up to draw. And that brings me to our fourth tip, which is find your sight. This is important. If you're drawing from nature or you're drawing something that's really beautiful naturally, sometimes we forget our composition and what we've learned can make a good piece. So remember to composition when you sit down to draw. When you're out in nature and you're looking at, say, a waterfall, it's gonna look beautiful. It's in 3D, it's there surrounding you, you have the, the sound and you have the feeling of the wind on your face, and it's just beautiful as it is. When you go to recreate that feeling onto a piece of paper, you have to remember that it's not gonna be the same. Remember to use your rule of thirds, remember your techniques, and don't head into it without thinking of those things. Also, if you're going to be doing this for the first time, or even for the 43rd time, you might be uncomfortable. Remember that it's always a little bit different when you're out of your studio or away from home. So try and pick places that you're going to feel better drawing in. Today, I chose to go to a Panera Bread to eat some lunch and draw. Cafes and diners are always good because there's typically people around you who are also working. I had a few people around me who were studying, doing their own work, and so they kind of were involved in their own thing. They weren't gonna look at me, so I didn't feel self-conscious. Another good place is the zoo or the park because people are pretty much there to see other things besides you, like animals or a sports game, and so they're not gonna look at you drawing. You won't feel as uncomfortable. But you know, you can pick really unusual places to draw if you want to. A street corner or the top of a skyscraper. Do whatever you want, but just try to remember that it's gonna be a little different than when you're drawing at home. Well, I'm coming up to our fifth tip, and this one is important, but it's hard to remember in the moment, and that is don't worry about taking your time. Sometimes when we're uncomfortable, or we just kind of like are trying something new for the first time, we want to get it out of the way and be like, whew, I did it. And so we can rush through our artwork. Especially if you feel like people are looking at us, we don't want to take too long or linger on the details because that's just a longer amount of time for them to look at you. Remember that it's okay to take your time. So here I am, I could have, I was tempted really to not add a background to this, but as I was sitting there, I remembered you know what, take your time. It's okay if there's a huge team of soccer players, some girls who had stopped and were making a bunch of noise around me. Just sit down and try to enjoy yourself. Remember to take your time. It can really be the thing that makes your piece better in the end. So the lighting in the cafe was not the best and the recording, of course, was pretty low quality. So I wanted to show you just the finished product that I have here of the forest chicken, which is what I named it before I knew what it was called, that I did in Panera Bread. And so I used colored pencils, the markers I packed, a sketching pen, and I think a Sharpie for this. And it's not perfect, you can see, but it's pretty close to what I was aiming for. And I was happy with it. I had a great experience out and about doing some art. So the last tip I wanna give you guys today, as you go out and about in nature or in your city to draw and paint and that is be scared and do it anyway. Sometimes the things that are the scariest or the most uncomfortable, the most difficult for us can be the most rewarding and so I really want to encourage you even to just try doing this for the experience and if it's scary the first time, the second time or even the third time, it's okay. You went out and you did something. Go you. You're awesome.